Taurus, welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for October of 2022. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm Julia Mijas in Mystic, Connecticut. Well, Taurus, this month's horoscope focuses largely on your relationships spanning your personal and professional life. You might have a lot of questions out of this horoscope, and they can all be answered in a lifelong love reading. Even if it's about collaborative relationships, that's still a useful reading to get. You'll find a link for it in the text that comes with this video. Well, this October begins with moon and mercury activity and finishes with wonderful relationship stuff. I want to start with the October 9th uh, full moon in Aries, which lands in your 12th house. And there's a bit of a watch out here. That's because the moon in Aries is already pretty fiery, pretty prone to anger. And it's hanging out here with Chiron, the wounded healer. So because these things are happening in your 12th house, there may be some buried anger that you being, you know, perhaps a stoic Taurus, if you're a typical Taurus, that you might have been sitting on for a while and it might want to explode around October 9th. Now, Venus is here to help and so is Saturn right up there. Uh, Venus brings in a note of diplomacy and kindness and social adeptness. And Saturn brings in some objectivity and some structure. And so, um, it's not that hard to avoid a really big explosive argument during this moon, but I do think a little bit of attention on this is uh, is worth doing. We're calling this arguments that wound, dialogue that heals, because really it's up to each of us to take this uh, energy and send it in a good direction towards dialogue and away from argument. Well, Julia, what is the news of Mercury, Mars, and Venus for the Tauruses of the world this month? Well, I've got some good news because Mercury is going direct very early on the month in October 2nd. So Mercury has been doing its whole retrograde cycle, which mainly took place last month, in your fifth house. You may have had a lot of miscommunications with your kids, or maybe you were reviewing whether you actually wanted to have children, or perhaps reviewing creative projects and games that you're a part of. Now, on October 10th, Mercury moving direct is going to enter your sixth house. This is a house that Mercury loves to be in because it's naturally ruled by Taurus. So Mercury in the sixth is a great time for getting organized and getting more order in your life, maybe clearing out your work desk, maybe going through your QuickBooks, and having increased communication with the people you work with. Then by October 29th, Mercury is going to enter your seventh house. We'll really go through that transit in a lot of depth in our next month's video, but this will be a time of increased sort of communication with your partner where you're really going to need another person to bounce your ideas off of to really help you get through the best strategies and thinking. Uh, now, Mars is going to be going retrograde very, very late in the month. It's slowing down in the sky all month until October 30th when it goes retrograde. And this is going to be happening in your second house of money, stuff, and values. So with Mars going retrograde, this is a planet of action and activity. You could feel quite um, driven to sort of gain more money. Um, but since it is slowing down and going retrograde, you might have to redo your actions in pursuing money. You might have to be reviewing the methods of uh, through which you're driven to do these things. And since the second house also rules your values, uh, this might be a time of conflict because Mars is a very feisty planet over your values with other people as well. Now, Mars is going to stay in this house for a number of months because it's just starting its retrograde cycle. So there's a big emphasis on the money and security in your life. And what are the actions you can take to achieve that? 
Now, Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, starts the month in your sixth house. Again, that's the house of your workplace. It's a house of rituals and routines. So Venus is in the sixth house is a great time to start a good new routine, especially something to help your health, because that's another thing the sixth house represents. Venus can like to indulge a little bit with diet. So that's kind of the one exception to the rule if you're trying to lose weight. I mean, but if you're trying to gain weight, Venus in the sixth can actually be very helpful for that. And it's a wonderful time for just really enjoying your workplace. Uh, wherever we have Venus is where we find pleasure and getting along well with clients, customers, coworkers, and bosses. Then on October 22nd, Venus is exactly conjoined the sun. We call that relationship rapture, rapture day. And that's when love can start moving forward in your life. So in the sixth house, this can be a time of, you know, finding ways to be of assistance to one another. This is a very service-oriented house. It really focuses on the practical uh, parts of your relationship, but we need the practical things to make a good relationship work. We don't just need all the romance and fun. Sometimes, you know, finding finding what you guys have in common in sort of a practical way and how you guys can help one each, each other out in life, um, um, can really be important to making a relationship strong. Then on October 23rd, Venus goes into her favorite house, the seventh, uh, which rules your relationship. So once you get those practical considerations out of the way, you can really just find more pleasure with each other with Venus in this house. And if you guys have had any arguments recently, Venus in the seventh is so nice just to smooth everything over. And I know Jamie has more to say on relationships for us this month too. Yeah, because the relationship themes are really thick on the ground later in the month here. So uh, the 23rd is also the day when the sun moves into Scorpio. Whenever the sun changes signs, it will move into a new zone for you. And wherever the sun is, we want to bring the sunlight of our high quality attention because when we spread it around, things can flourish and grow. This is the domain of partnership, of relationship. And so as the sun is passing along through this house for a 30-day period, you definitely want to focus on uh, cultivating and, you know, making your partnership flourish, putting some high quality attention on your partner, you know, and on the relationship itself. Um, so then, uh, the next great thing that happens is that Juno goes direct. Now, Juno retrograde, I've been talking about it in the last couple of months of horoscopes because Juno went retrograde in July and threw us all into a relationship retrospection period. In Pisces, this has been a, a period of looking at our relationship history looking at the past of a relationship that you may be in and asking yourself, how well does this mesh with my spiritual values? And do I feel a sense of soul connection with this partner? Juno has been retrograde in your 11th house. And so you may have been asking yourself, does this person feel like a friend? You know, does this relationship suit me in terms of friendship? And does it fit into community for me? Is it supported by community? And uh, if, if your assessment over the last couple of months has been, yes, it does, it passes all of the tests, then it's probably, you know, green light uh, in terms of going ahead with this relationship. Now, um, so when Juno goes direct, it's a wonderful feeling of being able to, uh, you know, finish out, get some closure with, get completion with that process of retrospection and relationship can begin to move forward again. And this coincides with um, Venus and the sun gathering here in the seventh house and Juno trines that as well. And then what should happen but a new moon, which is actually also an eclipse. So the moon joins Venus and the sun here in the seventh house, bringing even more emphasis to the relationship realm. Now, this eclipse, we're calling it Confessions, Acceptance, and Healing. It is an eclipse, and I'm usually rather, I don't know, <clears throat> I can't really say I'm down on eclipses because I think you can get something good out of most any astrological phenomena, but um, but this one, I think, it just doesn't feel as heavy as a usual eclipse, and the reason for that is because there are so many beautiful trines happening, so much harmony, 
Juno trines the sun, the moon, and Venus, and there isn't any stress in this moon. No planets making stressful aspects to it. So um, if you had the urge to uh, start an argument or uh, make some accusations uh, during the full moon in Aries on the 9th, I would say definitely wait until the 25th because this moon is a lot better for connecting intimately, sharing whatever you may need to share with your partner, telling them something that you've been holding back perhaps. Um, and it's a good idea to do that, to clean house every once in a while in your relationship because it can deepen the connection. And that's a good thing. Um, it may be also that there's something that your partner needs to tell you. And so you might get ready to hear that. Um, so approaching this moon, this eclipse with an open heart uh, and an ability to, um, to be tolerant and warm and compassionate in the conversation can really deepen the intimacy in your relationship in a beautiful way. All right, that's what we have for you this month. And you can always find your horoscope on our website, pandoraastrology.com in the horoscope tab. And uh, if you wanted to get a reading out of this horoscope, then uh, you can check out the reading tab and actually get into the schedule to see Julia or me. And uh, if you're curious to know more about these moons, we have videos about them, explaining them in more detail on our forecast page. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.